Thank you, Mark, for joining us today. Before we get on to your new book, I wanted to thank you for the publication of Pigs Might Fly. It's one that I always recommend Pink Floyd fans read if they're interested in the history of the group. Our American friends will recognise the book under the title Comfortably Numb, The Inside Story of Pink Floyd. Is it a book you look back on in fondness? Do you ever reread it? Um, yes, I, I do look back on Pigs Might Fly with fondness. Um, it was the first book I ever wrote and um, it, it was well received and uh, it was actually very successful and has continued to be successful. So that's uh, that's one of the reasons I'm very fond of it. Um, I do look back, I do read bits, reread bits of it from time to time, mainly for research. I'm never entirely happy with everything, so or anything I write. So you've always got to be self-critical. But um, yes, it's uh, it was a very important book for me. It was also the book that um, after it came out, Storm Thorgerson approached me and asked me if I would work on some projects for Pink Floyd with him. So uh, yes, the book the book has been very good to me. Your new book, Us and Them, The Authorised Story of Hypnosis, looks at the history of hypnosis and their beginnings in Cambridge and being friends with Pink Floyd to pretty much redefining album covers throughout the late 60s and 70s. What drew you to the subject? Why do we need this book now? I think I wanted to tell the story of Pink Floyd and to an extent Led Zeppelin and Paul McCartney, but it's it brings a fresh angle. I think the hypnosis story adds a fresh angle to stories that we have heard before. And for me, the most important thing is that Storm is no longer with us, was a huge character, a quite a divisive figure, um, Poe is still with us and Poe is a very big character as well and basically they're a couple of rock stars and their career as hypnosis almost follows the same arc as Pink Floyd and Led Zeppelin and other musicians in that they start off with all the best intentions and um, the best being the best mates in the world and then they produce some fantastic work and then it starts to go wrong so it's they are like a rock band in themselves and i felt that by telling their story you get that you get the great anecdotes but you also get a flavor of what the music business was like all through the 1970s because they they started their career in the late 60s and it finished in the early 80s just as cd's and the music video came in so it follows the same arc, really, as Floyd and Zeppelin. In the latest edition of Mojo, with the Pink Floyd cover, complete with a Pink Floyd companion CD, Pink Floyd, The Dark Side of the Moon, The Final Frontier, it states Storm never liked calling Hypnosis a design company, preferring the term art house. Over time, there is no doubt some of those images have become art. Do you feel that was always their intention? I don't think any of this work was produced with the idea that we'd still be talking about some of it 50 years later. No, I think it was another day, another job, another commission. And I think there was a huge amount of thought and brain power went into it, particularly Storm, who drove a lot of these ideas. But I'm not sure that anybody, whether it was hypnosis or the bands, would have imagined that this stuff would be hanging up in art galleries and museums and would be talked about half a century later. No, I definitely don't think so. The article also mentions Sid Barrett being seen at one of the 72 shows at the Rainbow Theatre. Were you able to get any of the band members to confirm that he had been seen? I have no idea if they knew he was there or not. I don't think it was a particularly big deal that he was there. Um, the quote I have in the book um, about seeing Sid sort of flitting around in the audience at the Rainbow came from a guy called Mike Leonard. And Mike was an art tutor, an art tutor in Highgate back in the early 60s. And come summer, Pink Floyd had lived at his house. They were his lodgers before they were Pink Floyd. So it was Mike who remembered seeing Sid Barrett there. The antidote of Storm standing in a firing line in Egypt while he took the famous photos of the pyramids, which would form part of the Dark Side of the Moon package, really gives a fantastic insight into what we can expect from the book. Being at the forefront as you were and listening to these stories as they were being told, you were in a very privileged position. Is there one story you can tell us here today or something that will just whet our appetite for the book? They, they seem to spend most of the 70s going to the Sahara Desert. There's loads of covers shot in the Sahara. 
and obviously they went out to do the pyramids in Egypt for Dark Side the Moon. Um, one of my favourite stories is, is when they go out to the Sahara again in summer 1973 to photograph a total eclipse. The best place in the world to see this total eclipse is a village called Chingueti in Mauritania. And uh, they go out there to try and photograph this eclipse for a Led Zeppelin album cover. Uh, and it turns into a real kind of boy's own ripping yarns type adventure and the, the results weren't entirely successful but I love the fact that Led Zeppelin paid for it because I think Pink Floyd wouldn't but Led Zeppelin did and the, the pictures were, were never even used but I mean I'm reminded of a great quote from Roger Waters which he said to me in the book when I asked him about some of this stuff he said I couldn't believe some of the uh, some of the trips that hypnosis went on I think they really just wanted a free trip to Timbuk fucking too so that's that's Roger's contribution to it. 2023, we'll see Pink Floyd's classic album, The Dark Side of the Moon, turn 50. That'll be in March. We are going to see at least two, three other publications all around that album. Your book being released in February is going to be a little bit ahead of that. And you, of course, you've taken a different angle. You're concentrating more on the art team behind that album and many other classic albums. Why should people look at your book ahead of others that are coming later in the year? Yes, the book is coming out in February. Um, about, I think it's about a month before the actual anniversary of Dark Side. So, yeah, this is the prime time to put out a book like this. Um, I'm aware of um, the Thames and Hudson book, the um, official 50 Years of Dark Side, which I think is pictorial and photographic. I'm aware of that. I'm not aware of anything else at the moment. I, to be honest, I just think I've had my head down doing... The hypnosis book so i think it's better i think this is the best book to buy definitely it's got more it's, it's good fun there's lots of stories in it but i'm not sure what what competition we're up against well certainly from what i've seen i can certainly testify to that it looks like it's going to be a great publication a must read for not only pink floyd fans obviously people who enjoy led zeppelin's work peter gabriel as you mentioned before you go last question Obviously, you're the author of the book, but who are the main players here? Who were you able to interview? Were you, for example, able to talk to Storm before his sad passing? I mean, this is very much the story as told through the voices of Poe and to Storm, who I interviewed many times when he was still with us. And a lot of other characters, designers, cover models, roadies, uh, drug buddies, all sorts of characters that were floating around this story. But more importantly is we've got Brand new contributions, as I said, from Roger Waters, David Gilmore, Nick Mason, Jimmy Page, uh, Peter Gabriel and Robert Plant, members of 10CC. So they have all taken the time to talk to me for this book. And, you know, I think certainly members of Pink Floyd and Led Zeppelin aren't entirely keen on doing doing interviews for books ever. So I was very flattered and very pleased that they felt that hypnosis was important enough for them to take the time and talk to me about it. And I hope everybody else enjoys it as much as I did writing it. Oh, I'm sure we will. And I can't wait. What I'll do is I'll put the links in this video's description so you can purchase it via Amazon or your typical book retailer on shelves in February. Check it out. It's going to be amazing. Uh, a deep dive into hypnosis and the main players, Poe, which is Aubrey Powell and Storm Fawkerson. <laughs>